Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bada habata fila assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh asalallah kareem rabbil arshil azim and yet to wallana fi dunya wal akhirah we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil protect us from kulli su'a makru bless us all with ikhlas with the battle of sunnah of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam a question was asked of habita fil law how should i deal with disobedient parents my parents disobey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they curse they fight they argue they drink alcohol. This is a common question that we receive about people who want to command the good and forbid the evil with regards to their parents. How should we uh, do such a excellent uh, act of obedience? How does that work when you have the obligation to obey your parents and be respectful and at the same time to command the good and forbid the evil? So first and foremost, sahabat fi Allah, commanding the good and forbidding the evil is a duty in Islam and it is fard al-kifaya. Fard al-kifaya. That means if someone in the community does it, then the sin is removed from the other people in the community. Secondly, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ لَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا That our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, And your Lord has decreed that you worship none alone except Him and to the parents be righteous or respectful and kind and gentle. So that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has coupled along with Tawheed that we should be obedient and respectful to our parents. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned his right, which is to worship him and him alone, free from shirk. And he's mentioned the parents' right along with his right. Meaning that this is also one of the greatest deeds that you can do. And we know this because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when he was asked, Ayu a'mala hibu illallah azza wa jal. What deed is most beloved to Allah the, the Almighty and Majestic? He said, Salat ala waqtiha. He said, prayer in its time. Kultu thumma ay. And then it was asked by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala. Then what? He said, bitter walidain. So the second thing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned was bitter walidain, which being righteous and kind and respectful and gentle and obedient to the parents. So we know that, that that's one of the greatest deeds that you can do in Islam. So how do we make a gem? How do we make a... Do we understand that in light of those two rights when they, uh, when they have contradiction? So the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam also mentioned... La ta'a li makhluk fi ma'siyatillah. That there is no obedience to the Creator in regards to disobedience to Allah. Meaning, you cannot obey anything or anyone in this creation at the expense of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, that's first and foremost one of the things we have to understand. And be able to uh, practice our Islam in light of that. That we cannot be, take obedience to our parents at the expense of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited alcohol, we cannot buy alcohol for our parents even though they commanded us to do so. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden zina and our parents say, no, it's okay to have a girlfriend, a boyfriend, and in fact, you better in order to show that you're a healthy person and you're like everyone else and you're, you're, you're not uh, a Kramakamallah, you're not from the LGBTQ 
thing, you need to prove that to me by having a girlfriend. You still cannot obey your parents in that uh, at the expense of disobedience to Allah because it's Muharram. And so that's first and foremost what we have to understand. So how do we advise our parents in regards to these, these things? How do we uh, tell our parents that when they are ordering us to do sin or they are doing sin and they're fighting and they're arguing? First and foremost, Ahabat fi in the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, من راء منكم منقر فليغيره بيد فإن لم يستطيع فبلسانه فإن لم يستطيع فبقلبه وذلك عرف الإيمان The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever sees a munkar, then change it with his hand. If he's unable to do so, he should change it with his tongue, speak out against it. If he's unable to do that, he should change it with his heart, and that's the weakest form of iman or faith. So here the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, let us know that there's maratib, there's different levels of commanding the good and forbidding the evil. And when it comes to your parents, you do not have the ability to change it with your hands, mostly. That that is not your right. The parents are over you. You cannot command them. You cannot uh, hit them and strike them or, you know, just go and destroy their property, even if it's Muharram, uh, and cause a greater harm and sin. So, also knowing and understanding that there's different levels and different ways to advise. There are different paths. It doesn't mean you have to be harsh. It doesn't mean you have to be stern. It doesn't mean you have to be difficult with your parents. Rather, you continue to show respect and you can advise them with the most beautiful language. You can also write them a card. So that way it's sort of like a gift. And you could say, oh my father and mother, I love you. Please don't fight. Please don't curse. Uh, there are things in Islam that we shouldn't do in the most kind and gentle and respectful language. So that is uh, ways that you can command the good and forbid the evil doing your duty to the best of your ability without disrespecting, without being foolish and without being harmful and insulting and belittling to your very parents who have such an immense right over you. Also, a habitifillah, if you're unable to do that as a prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam mentioned, because maybe there's going to be a greater harm or there's no benefit, then you can hate it in your heart. And the beautiful thing about that is the prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam, said, وَذَلِكَ عَرَفَ man, Weakest form of iman that lets us know it is from faith. It is from Iman. It's not like you have no Iman. You are still commanding the good and forbidding the evil to the best of your ability. And that is so important for us as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you will find that in the creation, when you want to command the good and forbid the evil, people react well and react better to gentle and kind speech and gentle and kind advice. And again, that takes wisdom on how to present that information in a kind and gentle way, which does not belittle the person you are trying to advise or you are trying to uh, bring about to good or forbid the evil. 18. Lastly, Ahabatifillah, commanding the good and forbidding the evil, it takes some fiqh fi deen. It takes um, understanding. It, it takes understanding what is good and what is evil, you know, according to the book and the sunnah, not according to opinions and our desires. It also requires uh, wisdom of when to apply something and when not, how to say something and how not to say something. And this comes about through experience and knowledge and insight that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses his servants with. 
most importantly and lastly is that when with when we're dealing with our parents it should be in the most kind and respectful way even when we see a wrong we don't command we don't harm we don't fight we don't disrespect our parents we still maintain that to the best of our ability and to the utmost we must strive our best because we can never repay them for the good ta'ala, that they have us and the sacrifices they have made for us to be here ta'ala. and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil protect us from kuli suwa makru to bless us with ikhlas with thabat ala sunnat al-nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam